You're not going to be able to see me, unfortunately, now. But, hey, that's... You got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> so, hopefully everyone can hear me. And, yeah, we're going to get this started. Six pillars to peak performance. That is something that I've been specializing in uh, while you guys are gathering around. I'm going to keep talking. <laughs> uh, so I've been specializing in this for the past decade in some sort of a capacity or another uh, through my own journey, through helping out my friends, through launching my uh, personal training pro uh, personal training company and uh, then nutrition consulting company and then brick and mortar gym. So it's been quite a journey for sure. And uh, I finally landed on these six pillars, on these six pillars to peak performance and what it actually means. And I've been making peak performance mainstream because it's not just for high performance athletes. It's not just for CEOs and entrepreneurs. I mean, peak performance is for stay at home moms and weekend warriors as well, right? We all need to perform at our peak to show up for our families, to show up in our lives. And it's as important to be a peak performer when you're a single mom who is working three jobs. It's as important for them to be a peak performer as for high level entrepreneurs. So we're going to kick this off and uh, feel free to ask questions as we go. And yeah, let's get this started. So you can actually scan this QR code if you are on your phone, if you have your phone, whether it's Android or um, iOS, you can simply open your camera and then scan this QR code. It's going to help us stay connected. And so once again, my name is AJ. Uh, my full name is Aurema Sjotka. I was born and raised in Lithuania, so that's why I have that weird name. So <laughs> since I moved to the States, no one could pronounce it, so it turned into AJ. And I'm a human performance and health expert. And today, once again, we're going to be talking about six pillars to peak performance. So what are the pillars? Well, first of all, you have to rub coconut oil in your eyes, put turmeric paste on your eyelids, then stick it up your bum, snort five grams of quinoa every morning. That's that's a must. This one is a must. Then drink 15 liters of apple cider vinegar a day. Avoid meat, dairy, water, and people, for that matter. So the funny thing is that, obviously, these are silly. Um, what happened with the wellness industry is that we went so extreme into all of these fads and dietary camps that everybody's trying to identify with rather than actually taking care, truly taking care of their health. So the pillars actually are sleep, stress management, nutrition, movement, and environment, and mindset. So let's let's dive right in. Well, let's get started with sleep. Obviously, we all have to sleep. I wish we didn't because um, I love not sleeping. I love doing things when I'm not asleep, <laughs> as reading, learning, uh, exploring, what have you, but um, I've experimented with polyphasic sleep. I, if you, you guys know what it is, or it's essentially 20 minutes uh, of napping every day, uh, or every two or three hours-ish or so, and it's simply not sustainable. So something that I haven't truly fully hacked yet is sleep. So <laughs> let's talk about what to do to at least take care of it. So. Um, I'm all about the minimal effective dose. So minimal effective dose concept is what minimal input is required to get maximum output. So you don't have to overthrow your lifestyle with wellness, but you actually can integrate, incorporate it in your life rather than, again, I mean, not all of us have time. I keep seeing, I keep seeing these, I'm kind of going on a tangent, but I keep seeing these uh, workout programs for celebrities. You know, this celebrity got jacked with this program. Like, great. I mean, that's their job. They work out for three to four hours a day, and then they all they do is recover and eat perfect food, and they have, they have a chef cooking for them. Well, yeah, obviously, they got jacked, uh, but we live 
real lives, right? We want to integrate wellness into our daily life, not overthrow our life with wellness or fitness or what have you. So sleep, 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 sleep. Back to sleep. Well, one third of our life is spent in bed, spent in bed right? So we have to make it count. And how do we do it? So five easy principles, five easy practices to improve your sleep. First of all, avoiding bright lights at night. One of the things that I really uh, never paid attention to is being on my screen um, in the past, uh, being on my screen and then utilizing technology. So one of the, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so one of the things that I actually identified uh, is the circadian rhythms. So all of us are animals. I mean, humans are animals. So we live with the cycles, with the rhythms of nature. And avoiding bright lights at night, uh, at night means that you're blocking that artificial blue light that is not good for your eyes or your body in the first place. Uh, but you're avoiding them completely, completely to actually upregulate the production of melatonin which is obviously necessary, a necessary hormone to, uh, that for our sleep. So whether it's wearing blue light blocking glasses or going to the extremes, uh, as, I, as I do, uh, and having only red light bulbs installed in my bedroom uh, and mostly, inc or not mostly, incandescent lights around my house only so that warm, you know, that warm uh, Thomas Edison light, um, that is that is yellow and not bright blue LED, uh, or simply wearing blue light blocking glasses. That's easy. Uh, putting those on when the sun sets. So that would be one of the game changers if you have trouble sleeping. Then setting a pre bedtime routine. Uh, what are, again another important thing that uh, it can be easily overlooked. We have alarms to wake up most of us, but very few of us have an alarm to go to bed. So actually having something to trigger your pre-bedtime routine, like an alarm or a song or what have you. Uh, and so I have one going off and what I do is I make a cup of tea. Uh, I go take a cold shower and I start reading, lay down on my acupressure mat, take my bedtime supplements and go to bed. So that is that what works for me. But again, whatever relaxes you, whatever puts you into that parasympathetic state, breath work, like a, uh, which we're going to address uh, later on, whatever works for you and relaxes you, essentially, you can simply do that. And making your own pitch black. So the best way to do it is to tape all the uh, bright lights again in your, in your room uh, and Bedroom is really for two things and two things only, for sex and sleep. That's it. I mean, I see people having TVs in their, in their bedrooms and then sleeping, uh, falling asleep with a TV on. Uh, that's, I hope it's not happening as much anymore, but uh, that's obviously not good for, for your sleep, not good for your health in general. And it's easy to remove all the electronics and light emitting devices from... Uh, from your bedroom and investing in blackout curtains. That's, uh, those are my favorite. I mean, sleep masks, blackout curtains, it doesn't get much darker than that. I really enjoy it. And then keeping the temperature low. So one of the things that uh, disturbs our sleeping patterns is high core body temperature. So again, for hormonal re regulation, uh, the optimal temperatures are between 16 and 67 degrees Fahrenheit. So that would be 16 to 20 degrees Celsius for uh, you guys who measure that in Celsius. <laughs> and getting sunlight every morning. I always say that our sleep starts the moment we wake up. So it does sound a bit counterintuitive, doesn't it? And it is necessary to spike cortisol hormone. So melatonin hormone for, for sleep, cortisol hormone to wake us up. So uh, to trigger that, getting that blue light, that natural blue light from the sun and stepping outside, just uh, training your eyes to see that morning light is absolutely fantastic to align yourself with the nature's nature's rhythms. Okay. 
And obviously not all of us have luxury. So uh, I'm currently stuck in Bangkok uh, and I usually live in Bali. And not all of us have the luxury of stepping outside and, you know, uh, hearing birds singing and it's always always sunny pretty much, pretty much every morning. Um, so if you do not have that luxury, still stepping outside is, is a game changer. It wakes you up. It spikes that cortisol hormone in your body, which is necessary, necessary for you to wake up. Or there are some devices that can replace that, like human charger. And bonus, bonus one, um, taping your mouth while sleeping. And research has shown that nasal breathing improves your sleep quality significantly. Your cognition, your memory, we are nose breathers, not mouth breathers. And uh, one of the great books is Patrick McCowan's Oxygen Advantage and uh, how important it is to breathe through our nose. So uh, check that out if you have a chance. Talk about stress management. Oh, I mean, stress. We all have stress. It's unavoidable. Every single one of us uh, experience stress. And I mean, if we didn't, we'd probably be dead. So I think it's a good thing. However, not all of us are able to manage it that well, right? So stress management is obviously incredibly important. So let's go over a few things when it comes to stress management. So I want to start with meditation, actually. Meditation is getting becoming more and more mainstream. So I was a long-term TM meditator, um, and that's called transcendental meditation. Sorry, I'm using terms without explaining them. <laughs> so uh, transcendental meditation is essentially a mantra-based meditation that is guiding you to the place of no mantra and no thoughts and complete relaxation. So that's called a contemplation technique. Um, and I transition now, um, after taking my first Vipassana course, I transitioned into practicing Vipassana and that is a liberation technique. So that's a little bit different, but again, like I'm just getting way too deep into this. Uh, if you are just starting out with meditation, whatever it is that works for you and you can, you can spend at least 10 to 15 minutes sitting down and closing your eyes and observing your body, observing your breath and sitting still, that's going to be fantastic. So great place to start is anywhere, really. So uh, next one I want to address is breath. So breathing is obviously great to manage your stress. Uh, 478 breath, uh, when I'm driving on the busy streets of Bali, 478 breath is my default mode. Uh, I actually, actually just without thinking, I start, once I'm on my bike, I start doing 478 breath. So that's, uh, that really relaxes me, puts me in, in, in the zone. And so that's essentially four count in through your nose, seven count hold, and eight count out through your mouth. So pretty simple, very easy to do anywhere, anywhere you go. You can take it with you anywhere you go. Same thing with box breathing. So box breathing is essentially uh, five count in, five count hold, five count out, five, five count hold. Another one is one to two ratio. So uh, one inhale to exhale. So if you're inhaling for five, you're gonna exhale for 10. That also puts you into that parasympathetic state. And then uh, thinking about thinking. So that, that is called metacognition and essentially removing yourself from the situation. Usually the reason we're stressed because we either overthink something or, uh, yeah, usually our mind creates, creates these crazy films, cr crazy movies and stories in our head that stresses us out. And um, essentially removing yourself from the situation and being able to observe yourself, yourself as, a, as an outsider and look at that perspective as, as if you were somebody else, maybe even, uh, that really helps to manage st stress. And that's that's been one of the things that I've been practicing for quite a bit. And it's been a game changer for my mental state in general. Then I want to talk about binaural beats. Um, you guys might have heard 
of them and it's essentially just the sounds that uh, different frequencies of different frequencies in each ear and they essentially entra entrap your brain and create that frequency in your brain because let's say uh, one earpiece is 10 uh, megahertz and another one is 8 and your brain finds itself around 9. That's, that's again that's a rough idea of how that works and there are different states uh, alpha alpha, beta, delta, gamma, theta, uh, that our brain goes through and binaural beats really help you get into those states. Okay, so let's talk about nutrition and start, start dieting. No, do not start dieting. <laughs> um, so that's how this works. <laughs> that's how it seems to be working in our society right now that they start dieting. You know, nutrition is it's associated with diet and they start dieting and they see some results uh, the results plateau people experience cravings they give in to those cravings because they're I mean, human right and then they start feeling guilty and then they fail they or they think they they fail they uh, find another diet and then this diet loop starts all over again so essentially you get into this negative feedback loop and they say hey uh, when clients come to me, they always say that, hey, nothing I tried works and nothing uh, I try will ever work because because of my past. And it's just I tried everything under the sun and it just simply doesn't work. Well, yeah, true. If if you keep dieting, if you keep doing the same thing, just different capacity and just pick up a new diet. Yeah, that's that's obviously going to happen. So. Um, when it comes to nutrition, there are some fundamental principles. Sorry, that's a lot of writing here. Uh, there are some fundamental principles when it comes to nutrition. So simply eating real food. So that means that as close to its natural state as possible with preferably ingredients that you can recognize. And uh, since if you live in a, in a tropical country, ideally, whatever is in season. So real food, unrefined, unprocessed. I mean, something that, that is not packaged every uh, vegetables like broccoli or um, or cauliflower they don't need to have a label yelling at you that oh healthy keto and uh, vegan <laughs> it's like a, it's not it's simply unnecessary right so avoiding anything refined ideally and refined being you know, heavily processed with additives of flavor agents and all that kind of stuff Pretty simple, isn't it? I mean, fundamentals of nutrition are truly, really, really simple. And then moving on is making your body fat adapted. So that's an interesting one. And that's um, essentially, you probably heard about keto dieting. <laughs> and I do not, I'm not identifying myself with any dietary camps. I call myself a nutritional agnostic because dietary camps do not do any good really i mean all of them preach the same thing essentially if they're if they're decent they're gonna preach that hey eat real whole foods that's it so but when it comes to making your body fat adapted is that our body is actually used to burning glucose right so mainly burning sugar and most of us are burning glucose non-stop so your body for your body to burn both it's actually really helpful to develop the metabolic flexibility. That is, essentially puts you in the state where you're able to burn fat and carbohydrates for fuel. And that is that is a great, actually, uh, for your brain performance, uh, ketones, ketones that are uh, that are excreted when you're uh, by your by your liver when you're uh, fasting or when you're eating a higher fat diet, they are a primary like preferable fuel for your brain like the way you actually if you ever been on uh in ketosis you just feel you just know how sharp you get and how good you feel when you're doing that additionally is just uh tapping into your adipose tissue uh, is a valuable valuable tool in general because as i said most of us constantly refeed on carbohydrates and replenish those glycogen stores in our muscles and our uh, our liver. So instead of that, being able to being able to use fat and being able to use your adipose tissue for 
for for fuel to feed you essentially uh it's it's incredibly valuable so uh first of all doing fasting uh that's usually after a 24 hour fast most of us get into that state and um another is limiting your carbo carbohydrate intake so it really takes about two to three months depending on a person so six to twelve weeks really to get fat adapted if you will if you're uh, cutting your carbo carbohydrate intake and then um getting into into ketosis for a prolonged period of time that actually helps your body get fat adapted and that's as i said it's you get both uh, best of that both uh, best of both worlds and that's actually what i do personally um i, I did personally uh i spent about three months uh doing a low carbohydrate diet got my body fat adapted and now i actually do pretty much both so uh in the morning i keep my carbohydrate intake lower and in the afternoon uh, I introduce some sort of carbohydrates and starches and that that kind of stuff. Uh, the reason for that is because the blood sugar control and blood sugar levels are so so stable throughout the day that something something that really helps me or any person really to concentrate and not have mid morning or mid afternoon crashes. So yeah, you might consider doing that. Let's see what we got next. Well, eating a colorful variety of fresh foods and spices. That's pretty easy. Again, uh, as colorful as it can get to get proper nutrient status and non-GMO locally grown and currently seasoned. So uh, support your local farmers markets and add spices to everything you eat. And it says make a smoothie. I mean, yeah, you can make a smoothie for sure. Uh, one thing on smoothies though, uh, make sure that when you're eating a smoothie i'm saying not drinking but eating a smoothie that you have something crunchy because a lot of people complain of the, having digestive uh, digestive issues and their just digestive system is being overloaded because when you make a smoothie and you're drinking uh, that hard liquid right like your uh, body recognizes it as liquid not as food and when you're not chewing we don't excrete uh, enzymes so throwing some cacao nibs, nuts, seeds, what have you in your smoothie so you can actually chew on it. So your body recognizes it as food and excretes the enzymes necessary to break down that food so it doesn't go as heavy on your digestive system. All right. And staying hydrated. On that note, I'm going to take a sip of water. <laughs> and essentially drinking water is if you live in emerging countries uh we get reverse osmosis water which is stripped of any parasites but it is it is also stripped of any minerals in it so the thing is that if we are just drinking that reverse osmosis processed water uh the water that it went through reverse osmosis we do not actually absorb much of it uh because every our cells have 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 charges have electrical charges and they need electrolytes they need electrolytes to actually take that inside to keep the cell hydrated because you probably heard of athletes uh dying while uh, mar marathon runners dying because they just kept drinking drinking water and they essentially it's called hyponatremia uh where you're essentially drinking so much water but this your body's not absorbing it so uh with, since it ha doesn't have any electrolytes so you dilute your blood if you will with with water and end up yeah that doesn't that doesn't, doesn't go well so uh getting uh, putting some some minerals e either a mineral solution or like uh, celtic sea salt or like uh, rock salts um, like something that is high in minerals and uh, most of some of my favorite is Celtic sea salt and there is this one from Utah um, rock salt yeah, Himalayan pink salt is fine as well so staying hydrated really fights off cravings as well so sometimes when you're when you feel hungry you might actually be simply thirsty that's it um, sugary drinks, packaged sodas, and juices, I don't have to explain that to you. You probably know that they do not hydrate you, and uh, they're so stripped, especially juices, they're so they're stripped of any fiber, so it goes straight into your bloodstream, and uh, when I see 
bagels and orange juice for or when people eat that for breakfast it uh, makes me uh, feel bad for them because I know hey, two hours from now they're gonna be crashing okay um, one of the things that I'm really big on is of uh, is, is is artificial fats so any vegetable oils any vegetable oil uh, that's so trans fats uh, hydrogenated vegetable oil sunflower oil safflower canola oil uh, cottonseed oil all that kind of uh, crap <laughs> Um, if you will, and because it is, it is really crap. Um, cut it out. That's I don't usually tell people to cut out things, uh, but when it comes to fats, it is pretty dangerous. Um, and I'm ex gonna, ex ex I'm going to explain why. If I could talk today, uh, so when it comes to fats, our whole body is made up of cells, right? And every single cell has a cell membrane. And those cell membranes, those cell membranes are made up of fat. One of the things when it comes to fat that we consume, that goes into our cell membranes. And the turnover of those cell membranes is a few months actually. So if your body, if your cell membranes are made up of that crappy fat, so what is your body made up of? Crappy fats, right? Uh, and the thing is that those fats are super inflammatory. So they cause chain reactions in in your body, uh, inflammatory chain reactions in your body. And as I said, it's not, um, they, they are super unstable. In general, their chemical structure is super unstable. And I don't know how we, obviously, I, I actually do know how we started using them because they're cheap. <laughs> and um, so avoiding those as much as you can. When it comes to added sugar, sure, you can burn it up easier than uh, those fats that get into your system. But again, added sugar is not usually necessary and retraining your taste buds to eat food that actually tastes good, that would be a better option. So there we go, a long one on nutrition. So um, actually we haven't finished yet. We still have to address fasting. So when it comes to fasting, what is fasting? So fasting is essentially eating, stopping, eating, right? <laughs> That's, I find this funny. Anyway, uh, so there, there are multiple forms of fasting. So that'd be intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting. Those are two main uh, areas. And I always say that your body knows better what to do with less food than with more food. Okay. And intermittent fasting, we are made, our ancestors, they would hunt, they would run around for a few days then refeed and do that again. So our bodies, uh, from the ancestral perspective, they are made from the biological perspective, perspective in general, they are made to withstand those fasts. And actually the salt turnover and uh, clean up well, that is called autophagy, that our bodies are able to clean up and our digestive system get some rest while we're fasting. So with intermittent fasting, it's pretty easy. I'm going to keep it simple, uh, starting with at least 13 hours. Uh, so keeping at least 13 hours after your dinner and between your dinner and breakfast. So for example, you you finish eating your dinner at 7 p.m. You're not going to eat breakfast until 8 a.m. the next day. So that's, again, that's very simple, that very easy to do. Uh, I usually don't go, don't recommend going beyond 70 hours. So uh, keeping it to 13 to 17 hours is, is pretty, pretty safe. On your more active days, you're keeping the window shorter on uh, the fasting window shorter on less active days longer pretty simple and then when it comes uh, to prolonged fasting I mean there are multiple uh, water fasts uh, 24 hour fast so I do two to three 24 hour fasts on a monthly basis uh, when it comes to more prolonged fasting um, I would do fasting what is called a fasting mimicking protocol you can contact me for that uh, it's by Walter Longo a researcher in longevity and it is essentially a five-day fast that is very low in in calories and it's all all plant-based and essentially what happens is suppresses this aging pathway mTOR pathway um, um, and the an anabolic growth pathway and um, essentially resets it for those five days and it's been proven to be even more um, even more 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 what's the word that I'm looking for it works better. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, it's uh, it's morning here in Bangkok. I apologize for my lack of lack of fluidity. And uh, so yeah, twenty. Where I was going with this? Yeah, uh, it works as well as water fasting. Uh, maybe even better. So there are there are studies done that show side by side water fasting and uh, fasting mimicking protocol. So that's pretty pretty interesting data there. Okay, and nutrition, nutrition uh, supplements, nutritional supplements. So these are the supplements that 90% of the population are lacking. Those are the nutrients that 90% of the population are lacking. So uh, B12, E, D, uh, K2, magnesium, and iodine. Um, there are plenty of others that we could talk about, but oh, I think we'll leave it for the next time. Okay, movement. So movement is medicine right and movement is your food and exercise is your supplement so i do not do that's what it says movement not working out movement is completely different from exercise so quick three on movement is moving constantly throughout the day uh one of the things that i have is actually just popped up a few minutes back uh i in fact i spend my work days had a standing desk uh, back in Bali. Uh, I have a walking treadmill station, so I'm able to walk while I'm typing, while I'm on, a com on my computer taking conference calls and what have you. So moving constantly throughout the day, that sprinkling, that activity throughout your day, that low level physical activity and having constant reminders on your computer. So Stretchly app is my favorite on your computer. It just blocks the computer screen and, and simply yeah, uh, watch your computer screen and you have to you have to step away. I mean, you have to do something. So knocking out 20 push-ups or squats or going through a quick yoga flow. I mean, it's really it really is easy. And if you just do that, workouts become simply supplements. I mean, I work out no more than three hours a week. I mean, that's kind of stretching it. I'm probably two and a half. <laughs> and uh, but I'm constantly moving. I'm constantly, constantly moving. Planning ahead. I mean, um, we travel a lot. I mean, not not around this time, but we do travel a lot. And scheduling your movement sessions in, and coming up with how, when, and where you're going to include physical activity when traveling. Okay. And exercising. Well, incorporating different types of exercise into your weekly routine. It's like, a, even though it's a supplement, it is good to break break out some sweat. So these are the main ones that I usually uh, target. It's all of them are under 45 minutes. Maybe strength training takes a bit longer. But mitochondrial health, uh, taking 20 minutes to sprint as hard as you can for four to eight times with full recovery. So that tr um, optimizing your mitochondrial health, it's absolutely fantastic and it's easy to do. When it comes to heart health, obviously we want to, have a healthy heart and targeting the improvement of your maximum oxygen consumption. So we, uh, that you can do with one to one ratio of movement to rest. Um, and hit training, you're probably familiar with that and strength training as well. We could dive deeper into this again, uh, feel free to contact me if you'd like to learn about this more. But these are the basics to cover. If you cover this plus low level physical activity, that's all you need. That's it. Okay, let's cover environment. Well, <laughs> that's, yeah, our smart homes and smartphones, smart everything. It's, yeah, ironically, it's making us more stupid. And coming of the 5G system, uh, fifth generation network coming up. Um, and I'm really wary of the research that's come out and what is happening with that. So we simply recognize, we have to recognize that technology is a great tool as long as we use it and not being used by it, right? So um, we can combat technology with technology, right? So using it intentionally, uh, when I actually still have that, when I open my phone, I have like this um, natural, so habitual finger movement where I click on something and it probably social media apps usually, uh, for my email. And so I have to 
install some apps to combat that that simply don't let me do that and make me more mindful of it so combating technology with technology right and uh, also your environment obviously your air pollution so if you live in the city and as i said i'm in bangkok now so it's not the cleanest city uh having plants having plants really really helps your air quality in the apartment so um if you look up nasa study they've done this amazing study where they identify the plants that clean the environment best so yeah uh snake plants is my favorite and it looks nice so load up your house with these <laughs> Air purifiers, obviously, if, if you want to go um, take the next step, that'd be a great solution. When it comes to personal care products, so the, that's what I have been helping out my clients with a lot because that's something that most of us ignore. It's like it's um, one of the, I forget, I forget who it was, one of the doctors wrote this amazing book, Rain Barrel Effect, how essentially it accumulates. All this stuff, I mean, uh, when you look at it, the ingredient list of personal care products they're they're full of heavy metals that essentially mimic mimic estrogen and cause um can cause autoimmunity and hormonal dysregulation so being wary of those and ewg is a great resource for clean products to identify clean products and um and actually if you message me after this my colleague put together an amazing clean personal personal care product uh package and he um essentially a pdf that and he has an amazon cart as well that you can order as well all right last one last but not least mindset mindset has been something that i ignored for a long while because it's woo -woo, it's nonsense right <laughs> it's, uh, it doesn't make any sense uh, it's rah rah but hey uh it's been biggest game changer to be honest it, i incorporated it last but it's been the biggest needle mover for me personally so morning formula morning formula is something that you read on a daily basis that reminds you why you do things why you do things and it kind of anchors you to to a state of to a state of mind that that you want to be in your that empowers state of mind so if you have any um again if you do message me I'm, i would like i would love to share this with you and uh that's something that you read on a daily basis and it can make it work for you essentially a mind map for you to to work on uh, something that the identity that you want to live up to and once you anchor yourself to that state of mind in the morning uh, you're able to start your day in a in this empowered state and if you fall off you're always able to come back to that state of mind that mm, that's how I started my morning and so simply setting rules what are non-negotiables that you're gonna stay accountable to yourself with and quotes what inspires and picks you up so that's essentially what it's what it consists of and i would love to share that with you uh so please feel free to reach out okay okay so that's that's me that's i, I age well <clears throat> that was me 20 years ago so i've been doing doing things well that's why i look younger now uh, but anyway, so uh, what do I personally do? My personal protocol. I would like to share a few things with you guys. So when it comes to workouts, yeah, minimal effective dose. Uh, I do not like the gym. Um, and it's one of the things that I just know that workouts are great for me, but I don't particularly enjoy them. Okay. Um, and then here, my little treadmill workstation. <laughs> um i do all kinds of weird biohacks and uh cryotherapy from cryotherapy to photobiomodulation to uh, iv uh, nutrients to um uh, animus to ozone th uh, therapies i mean yeah uh, and this <laughs> laundry list of supplements as well uh so again all of them have have uh place and time in your inner diet and again there's no one size fits all so when i'm working with my clients i don't actually offload everything on them obviously uh, because i need to understand their nutrient status so uh, if you're not tracking you're guessing so tracking your blood markers and 
knowing what is happening in your body is absolutely crucial. So uh, supplementing without knowing that is pretty pointless. So yeah. Anyway, just wanted to throw it out there. So when it comes to nutrition, I keep it simple. I stick to whole foods and I try to include offals at least once a week. So offals are organ meats because those are natural nature's multivitamins. And uh, everything that I eat is essentially that are animal products that are ethically raised. So pasture raised, grass fed, grass finished um, as again, close to the natural state uh, as possible, because if I do choose to eat animal products, I've been um, plant based in the past and um, actually did not have a good experience. And I just don't want to uh, get too deep into this. But uh, as I said, I'm a, uh, in the dietary camp of an nutritional agnostic. So, um, however, including, yeah, including animal products into one's diet, it's the most nutrient dense when it comes to not, I'm talk, not talking about muscle meats, but when it comes to organ meats, those are most nutrient dense, uh, foods on the planet. So, um, that then I do enjoy, <laughs> I do enjoy raw desserts, occasionally raw desserts because, because my girlfriend is, um, raw food chef and she's um yeah she's a dessert chef and she has a business based on raw desserts and banana bread so yeah uh i indulge from time to time and nothing fried that's i keep it simple that nothing deep fried and nothing with those rancid fats that i mentioned before and when it comes to biohacking i mentioned yeah a bunch of this stuff <laughs> uh so what to do next? Nothing, nothing. You don't have to do anything. Uh, but um, we were supposed to have, oh, that's an old slide. We were supposed to have a retreat coming up in May, a live retreat here in Bali. Uh, obviously that has been delayed around this time. Uh, so yeah, save the date in the past. <laughs> and yeah, check out the highperformanceretreat.com. Once we're back live uh, and back online uh we can yeah um if you need a getaway if you think that it'd be a good opportunity for you to just reset your life um and the practices that you are currently uh currently incorporating through your lifestyle that's a great place to to be for sure or kickstart your your process of change uh, for the better for the better health and a better lifestyle so uh you can find me we're running a human performance and health practice um, combined with functional medicine at thrivingwellness.co. And you can find me on Instagram at wellwithaj. And again, if you still have your phone up, um, you can scan this QR code and we're going to stay connected. So thanks for watching. I hope this was useful to you. Sorry for stumbling on my words. Uh, it's, yeah, I uh, want talking about sleep, huh? I didn't, I didn't really get good sleep last night. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And if you have any questions, please, please, please feel, feel free to, to reach out. If you have any feedback, I'm always open for it. Uh, I'm always open for any sort of a discussion. So please feel free to reach out and Hey, thanks for watching.